in the world of microservices, where they are scaled up and down based on demand, there needs to be a way to pass the configuration information to these dynamic services from a central source. This also makes managing changes to configuration easy. Otherwise, each service needs to be changed independently. Spring Cloud Config Server provides that source of central configuration. In this video, we will see how to set up a Spring Cloud Config Server easily. First, specifying configuration using local files. Next, specifying configuration using GitHub, which is a good way for most production applications. Here, I have Spring Tool Suite running, which is a flavor of Eclipse. Let's click on File, New, and choose Spring Starter Project. Give it a name, Spring Cloud Config Server. Search Config and choose Config Server. Search Actuator and select it and click Finish. First, let's go to our main class and add here the annotation at Enable Config Server, which does most of the heavy lifting and the magic of configuring the config server. This is literally the only thing you have to do other than adding up few properties in the property file. So let's go to the application.properties file and specify our port as 8888. First, let's demonstrate using local property files and for that, we have to choose the Spring Profile Active as native. Spring Cloud Config by default looks under the config folder under Source Main Resources for the configuration files. So let's right click at Source Main Resources and choose New Folder, call it Config. Let's now right click and choose New File and call it MyApp.Properties. My app is the name of the client app who will be a consumer to the config server. So create property files for every app. So if I have a second app called order app, then I would place its configuration properties in a file called order app.properties. Let us put some properties in here. Some common properties needed by an app are the database connection properties, etc., which we can specify in a central way using the config server. Let us create another property called location, give its value as my app profile. Let's copy this file and paste it, giving it a name as my app hyphen dev dot properties. So this is a standard pattern of specifying property files for different profiles. So if the consuming app, my app is run with a dev profile, it will read the properties from this file first. If there is no specific file for a profile, it will pick the default one. Here, let's change the username and password to dev and for the location, let's say my app dev profile. Let's run this app by right clicking and choosing run as Spring Boot app. Let's go to the browser and type HTTP localhost 8888 slash my app slash default. So this is the URL a config client will call with the pattern as config server URL followed by its app name here my app followed by a profile. If not a specific one then default and the config server returns the info from the appropriate my app.properties file. Let's now change the profile to dev and it pulls the info from the my app hyphen dev.properties first and then my app.properties file. So it provides a nice hierarchy resolution with the values in proper order, specific ones first and then the default ones. If you specify a non-existent profile, it just returns the default one for the app. So here, my app.properties. Now, in a typical production application, instead of keeping these configuration files locally, you would like to keep it, say, in GitHub so that it is versioned and easier to manage and change. So here on my GitHub page, I have created a repository configuration properties. I will share the URL in the description below. Here, I have created two folders for my two apps, my app and my app second. Let's click my app and here are the two files we saw earlier. For the my app second, we just kept a single property location with its value as my second app. We also have the application or properties file here where we have 
the location keys value as default properties. All right, let's copy the URL. Now let's see how we can configure our config server to use GitHub instead. And that's pretty simple. Let's first delete the config folder. Next, in our application.properties file, let us point to the config server URL using spring.cloud.config.server.git.url. Since we have folders like my app and my app second in there, we need to mention the search path with Spring Cloud Config, git search for the config server to be able to go down in these folders and search. Otherwise, it will be limited to just the root folder. With this in place, now let's restart the app. Go back to the browser. Let's go to the default profile. It always reads the application or properties from the root and then overrides any common properties from the specific property file. So here, my app.properties. With the dev profile again, we see the order of resolving the property is first from the specific file my app-dev.properties, next my app.properties, and finally application.properties. Let us say our second app also requests configuration properties with localhost 8888 slash my second app, and let's use the dev profile. Oh, we typed my second app instead of my app second, which I think is the actual name I created in the folder in GitHub. Anyways, it demonstrates that if it does not have configuration for the app, it brings back the default application.properties file. Let's change it to my app second slash dev. Since there is no specific configuration property file for the dev profile, it brings back the one for the app, so my app second.properties file and the application.properties. So the config server provides a nice way of referring to the configuration properties by the consuming microservice in a central way, providing a proper hierarchy and order of properties based on the configuration files present. We will see how to create a config client and consume it in the next video. So please watch Spring Cloud Config Client Next to see how a client can now consume the information from the config server. Thanks for watching.